Jason, I just wanted to share some of my experiences, give you some insights, and tell you just a little bit about some interesting things uh, I've done to, to, to fill in what some of the documents I did. I, I did grow up in Ohio, and it was pretty cool. I went to a high school that was about the same size as Saratoga. My parents actually moved to the town I grew up in because of the good school districts. You know, good Asian parents, you know. So, and then also, um, I was also the, the, the only National Merit Scholar in my graduating class, and I didn't even realize, you know, you guys are super into that right, right now, and I didn't even realize how, how interesting that was. Also, um, Peter Jack, my husband, Doug, he also has a bachelor's and master's in computer science. He got a master's from, from Stanford. He's a software engineer, too. So poor Peter and his brothers have super geeky parents, but that's what, that's what happens. So I, I've worked for a lot of companies. Um, I started out with IBM. I've worked for small and medium-sized companies. That's fun. Every size company has its advantages and disadvantages. I've done a lot of different things. Um, I started out with this, this uh, I did this dark test group, and basically, and I, one cool thing about being in some bigger companies, you can move around. So I moved around and I gradually figured out what was really interesting to me was user interfaces. And back in those dark ages when dinosaurs walked Earth, we had very primitive things like we had big clients, we had thin clients, but never mind that. But then things really got super interesting when the iPhone came out. I thought it was the most amazing thing. You have to realize that I actually grew up before the internet. So things like this are just still really cool to me. I grew up reading Isaac Asimov and he wrote stories about handheld computers. I was like, this is it. This, this, this is, it's real. And I still have not gotten over the coolness of, of mobile phones and devices like that. So I really like the iPhone, but I had a background as a Java developer, so it seemed more natural for me to go, go into Android. So I became an Android developer. And when I first started out, I started out this, um, this as a contractor, and I was the only Android developer there. And I had to pour over really bad, sketchy documentation and incomplete OS and try to get things done, it was still super fun, still super fun. Uh, so that was, what was that in 2010? So then further along, as I got more experience, the hardest thing is getting that first job, especially as a mobile developer, it's like, okay, we want you to have two years of Android experience, but how do I get it? But, so you manage. So I had a couple really, interesting job as, uh, as an Android developer. One, I worked at School Messenger. You guys heard of that? You look at the website, School Messenger. They've done cool things, that, that cool software that securely delivers documents like your report cards. School Messenger produces that. So when I was there, one of the things we did was create custom uh, school district apps. So my team created basically the, the, the software that would let the app creators, these other people in the company, actually create the, the custom apps because you don't want to create a from scratch app for every single school. That doesn't scale well. So we, we had software and then they just needed to kind of tweak the, uh, tweak the CSS and the HTML to, to, to make these nice customized sites, but the whole, the whole meat of it was the same software. So that was really fun. I had the experience of working on, and this is, it, Okay, I want to back up a step. Now, my experience is solely as a software developer. Your minds will vary, but, but you'll, you'll get the idea. So my team had a lot of different people on it. There was a three-person architect. They were the, um, those are front, front end developers. They're back end developers. They're QA people. So just, and then we all work together. Now that's the cool thing. You guys have the experience right now in FTC. You know, you have software, hardware, et cetera, uh, lots of different moving parts, similar things. So you're getting great experience right now. So we did some cool things. One, one cool thing we did was there was one day where everybody, even my manager, created a custom app for a school district. 
So that, that was pretty fun. I actually created the app that um, Saratoga Union School District used to have, like the, 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 that's what Redwood and elementary schools. Now Blackboard's competitor fully owns that, so that's different, but that was one of my, one of my claims to fame. <laughs> The other thing, the other cool thing about doing that is we're actually using our own software and maybe you've heard the term eating your own dog food. That, that's a really super great thing when a company does that because it's one thing to develop a product and then the customer uses it and complains about it, but you really start to feel their pain and go, oh, this really needs work. So I think eating your own dog food is a, is a great thing for a company to do. So that was, that was a really fun experience. We also have regular hackathons where we could just kind of do whatever we wanted. And it's in the, the realm of what we're doing there. So, and what we did was basically work all day in it and then demo it. So it's really fun. It's, it's really fun to go to a company that's not afraid to do things like that to innovate. It's just for creativity and people. I also work for a, a biotech company called the Bio, BioConnect. That's really cool because they create a wearable device, a patch that measures biometrics like your respiration, heart rate, fall detection, and then that's controlled via Bluetooth uh, with a like an Android phone, an Android device, basically. So that was that was really cool. Um, a use case would be in a hospital, you can do patient monitoring. Also, you can monitor a patient when he comes home because that's really important. One thing hospitals and insurance companies want to avoid is a patient being readmitted. So, like if someone had a heart attack, comes home, that first period of time home is really critical. And if you can remotely monitor the person's heart rate, things like that, it's super valuable. You can you have an app to alert the doctor, for example, if something, something happens. So very, very cool stuff. And then my team actually developed the SDK that a hospital or something would, would use to write, write their own apps. And that was really cool. It was really well designed because I was a team of about nine people or so, and we each owned a component, and it was, it was layered. So that was a really great example of, of working all together because you owned your piece, but it had better work because everyone who depended upon it would surely let you know if your, if your piece broke the others. So that, that was a really good experience. Other good things we did was we, um, we had meetings, we brainstormed, we just really, really worked well together. It was really fun. You're going you're gonna to find, in general, and in, in when you get to work world, like you are now, you're getting great experience, like I said. Work is very collaborative. I think gone or rare are the days where someone, an engineer, just sits in this office in his own little sandbox. Teams are highly collaborative, and you're going to find, too, when you get into job interviews, you're not just looking for skills, but you're, you're going to see if you're going to, if you're what they call a personal fit. And, and that's very important for you and the company to figure that out. So, but anyway, that, that was cool. Oh, yeah, I want to tell you another thing about at that company, about that company. I did other things too. A lot of times they needed some internal Android apps, so I'd write it. There was one day where my manager, who's a super awesome guy, but he said, it was late in the afternoon and one day, he said, okay, hey Patty, I want you to write an app. It won't take time. I was like, I want it done by tomorrow. I'm like, it might be 3 or 4 o'clock p.m. I'm like, okay. Uh, and no, no, wait, wait, really, you can do it. It's, it's really easy. And, and I did it, but I sweated a bit. But like I said, he was a great guy. He wasn't being mean, but. And, and he's the sort of person that you 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 know walk on water for if you could. So, but I managed to do it. So some fun fun things like that can happen in your work life too, and you laugh about it later. In my when the last job I was I was at I was wor again working on a an SDK, but this was a uh, this was enabled me to write like a hybrid app. So it was. Those of you who might have heard of React Native, it was using uh, React Native so that you have one code base and then you can you can create an iOS or an Android app if you have that code base. That that was really fun because again, a very disparate group of people worked well together and um, because you might be friends with and work with uh, the product manager or the documentation person or another team or the web guys and the mobile guys. 
It was very, very fun. Also, we did cool things like every two weeks we tried to go out for a boba tea, and this was really, really cool. This, this was an awesome building, the most awesome building I ever worked in. There's a whole hallway that was a gaming hallway. It was built to, to it had built in monitor things and couches. It was built to be a gaming hall. My manager was often there when he was going to work. You know? <laughs> so that was super cool. So, so those are some of the fun jobs, but basically, like I said, I've done a lot of things, but working as a mobile app developer has just been the most fun thing I've done in my whole career, and it's so much fun that I just do it on my own. And I've also decided to become an iOS developer, so I, I took an online uh, course, and I've been, I actually, my app is actually in the store now, it's in the store now, it's free. And so I wrote an app that, basically an AI, it uses visual uh, recognition, so you give it an image and it'll try to guess what it is, and sometimes it guess right, sometimes it guesses hilariously wrong. Uh, I took a picture of the bar rabbits and it said, is it a gnawing mammal? <laughs> well, technically I guess. <laughs> so anyway, it was, it was super fun and super easy to, to do, so I hope to get more and I hope to get a job as an ass developer, I'll let you know. But, so that's just an example where Okay, you're working hard, you're getting your education, but you can have a job doing some super cool things and get paid while you do it. It's, it's a neat thing. You, you guys are very, very blessed. So I, I mentioned what it's like on a job that teams are really collaborative. So in order to be a successful engineer, it's not enough to just be smart. You have to be able to work with a lot of people. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to talk, write, things like that. You need to be able to be a good team player too because the best teams I've ever worked on wasn't like, oh, this was like the smartest person in the world. Yeah, you want smart people, but what's really important, you want people you can work with. The best teams I've been on are people help each other out, like you guys do. It's not like, oh, I'm out for myself, and my eyes will dry. You don't know, want a team of prima donnas where, that's why it really gets me when you go for a job and you want to get like a rock star or something like that. It's like, work with rock stars. I want to work with people who can play well with others. The best things I've been on are people truly honestly help each other out and want to help each other succeed. That's kind of my one. I thought that's kind of a new one too. So look for things like that. And, and don't be and be friends, not with just the person you work with, but the different groups. Learn what's going on. You'll be a better engineer and it's also it's also good for people with other people making it possible to get to know you. It's, you, you really need to network and not be on your own. Someone goes, yeah, and you try to, I have no idea what she does. I have no idea. You don't want that to happen. Also, you, you might well have heard of Agile. A lot of companies use that. You don't know what Agile is. Do you know what Agile is? Yeah, it's good. Thank you. It's a software development methodology where there, there's, there's basically, um, you have teams, you have what are called, what works are called sprint, typically two weeks, sometimes you do one week, one week, so a little, a little rush. You, uh, you basically usually have daily meetings, and what you do is, you also, um, at the beginning of this, or right before the sprint starts, you have a meeting, and you, you have all these work items that are nicely identified, and you figure, okay, this is what I'm going to work on. So work is very organized, it's, it's really clear what you're going to do, so goals are clear, the work to be done is clear, and it's also clear whether it's it, or if something's done because things go through phases. It's it's not just okay, fix it and throw it in and done. It, it really you, you really figure out if something is really done. If, if, if is it is it is it tested? Do, does do this does QA say yeah, it's good? So so it's it's really you really end up uh, having better software in that way, and everything is. You track, track, uh, you can track everything, how much work done is quantifiable. So I, I find it really a really good thing. I have also find too that um, a company really needs, your team really needs to figure out what works though because you shouldn't just slavishly follow some, some process or system if it's not working because you're going to find, well, I need to do this. I, I've worked at companies where, oh my gosh, they were just like black and white. This is what just, it was like Agile was, was, it's just a whole rule book to follow. And 
the bottom line is do what works and be open to new ideas and new change. But, but basically, Agile is pretty cool. The other thing, um, as, as an engineer, is you really need to be just proud of learning all the time. It's not, it's not a job, at least the big jobs, aren't the ones where, okay, I go, show up, work, come home, blah. No, really, really, things, technology is changing so much that you need to learn a lot. You should expect to spend time outside of work reading or taking classes, writing apps with your mobile developer, things like that. It's really important. And I assume if, if you're really interested, if you're in the right field, you probably want to do things like that. So the other thing is, don't expect to do the whole, the same thing for your whole career. You probably, you will not be working, probably won't be working at the same company for, forever. These days, you used to in the old days, these days if you work at a company for too long, you get another interview and you go, why did you work at that company so long? You also don't want to be a job hopper though and you move every year because they'll go, why don't you stay in one place too long? So there's kind of like maybe about four years or so where you stay at a company. But also, you might just change, because I started out doing, like you said, that you know, app thing or just Java application development, and then I became a mobile app developer, and then in the last four months, I'm like, yeah, I really want to be an app developer. So that, that happens, and that's cool. I expect that. And then, again, just speaking as a software developer, you should just be prepared to learn whatever language uh, you want. I, I learned Java. I, I've worn Swift. Uh, sometimes I had to do C++ or C sharp, uh, JavaScript. Um, I've recently learned, learned Python. Uh, so yeah, I probably if I'm going to do more Android work, I probably should learn Kotlin. So that's you know, and then but once you learn a language, I figure it's try it's another language. So then I guess I've mentioned this too. So okay, you don't stay at a company or a job forever, but but choose carefully because. The wrong company, it's sort of like marrying the wrong person. It's just can, the wrong job can make you miserable. Miserable. Just ask, ask, ask Peter's dad. And the right the right job, you know, so so yeah. So choose carefully, don't just go, oh my gosh, they gave me an offer and everything can we got so many, cool. Just uh, be smart. They're looking at you, but you look at them too. So make a good choice. Look at the people. It's like, is this like, are these people I want to work with? I went to one interview once, and I was thinking that everybody looked super unhappy. I'm like, this, is, this is not a good sign. Not a good sign. So, so, so those are just uh, just some tips there. The other tip is that wherever you work, keep in contact with people. Connect with them on LinkedIn. Keep in touch with them because actually, the way maybe most people get a job or the best way to get a job is through, through knowing someone than just, oh, here's a job, I'm just gonna send in my resume. You, you obviously can't get a job that way, but it, it, it makes a huge difference if if Joe Smith you used to work with is at this company and he can refer you, that is, that, that super helps. You don't, you don't even know how much it might help. It might be that you interview at this company and some, some, of, the, some of the decision makers who are deciding if they want to hire you, they might go, Joe, Joe, what do you think of Patty? Is she good? Oh yeah, she's good. See, it can make, it make, it make such a difference. So keep in contact with people. And the people you work with here, you might be working with them down the road. So networking is super, super important. So, yeah. What else, what else can I say? Um, so I think, you know, whatever you do, it's a, it's a pretty exciting time. There's a lot of cool technology out, so I'm really excited for you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to stick around this excitement for a long time too, but I, I, you've got just so much to look forward to. So just with software, you're going to see a lot more with you know, AI machine learning and the car technology. So it's going to be just cool stuff, just of course way beyond that too. But so there's some cool things there. Um, so yeah, so whatever you do though, you have the opportunity to have the kind of job where you can wake up and go, oh my gosh, I, I can't wait to get to work. You might not realize how, how blessed and fortunate you are if you can do that. Because I dare say most, most of the world has jobs where they just kind of 
in my heart. I mean, so, you know, it's not just, okay, you can get a good job, make money, live in this expensive Bay Area. You can also do just some really cool things. That makes, it makes such a difference, and don't take it for granted either. So, anyway, so I just wanted to share some of my experiences. I've had a lot of fun. I'm still having a lot of fun. And I'm real excited for you guys. Whatever you guys decide to do, and you don't have to be in here or whatever. Whatever you decide, general statement, whatever you do, get your education. Um, try to try to do what, do what you love. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm real, real excited for you. And try to try to do good things with your gifts. Uh, work help like help each other out. And yeah. Thank you. I wish you all the best. So I can uh, take any take any questions. Yes. Uh, I think we'd appreciate it if you would give a brief synopsis on your trends. Oh, you know what? You're gonna be totally. I wish I never met you. You're gonna be totally like not excited because this is like way back and it's just like it, okay. It was like there's patents and there's patents, okay? Right. And I'll be totally honest. It was like past the thousands patent and I was like sure. you know one of the people on it. And this was when I was at a company called Rico Innovations. They make those big honking printers. And back in the day, you're going to go, really? But back in the day, printing was hard. It's a lot easier. You can print from your phone now, yay. That used to be impossible. You used to be able to look at a big old printer and go, I need to, I need to print something. Okay, you, could be, um, you could be at a, a remote company, a different company. You're, you're, you're visiting another company. Oh my gosh, I need to, okay, this is sound weird. I need to print my boarding pass. Who does that anymore? Okay. But let's pretend people do that. Here's a printer. How the heck do I use it? Oh my gosh. I gotta be on the network. I need to find its IP address. So, you know what you did? You, you, someone went, can you print it for me? That's what you did. Super pain. So these patents revolved around making that a lot easier. Being able to just kind of basically things were, you know, we're, we're gonna go, so this is not news. Things, things where it make things discoverable, like if you want to print from your phone, believe me, you just didn't, oh, believe this, connect, yay. So this was all before that. So, so, so there's various patents revolving around. Even six years ago, it wasn't client. that easy. Like, for example, on, on, the, on the, the printer, the MFP, the multifunction printer, there was, there was a little server running in there. So anyway, so basically the patents revolved around that. And back in the day, that was revolutionary. So almost like wireless Yeah, it, and it, but it was um, without without having something like Bluetooth, so right. just having a lot of new features and things like that. So yeah, I should, but see, see, so, someone someone pioneered so that it's 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 way easier now. So the patents are all are all around that. There, there might be a few things. I guess I guess it would boil down to depending on what you want to do experience. Because of course you can read that, oh you can be a software developer without education, but obviously that, that degree is gonna gonna help. I think I I certainly recommend getting your four year degree and getting internships right. It's critical to get internships. I guess the biggest barrier would be that after you get the education, the experience, because You'll, you'll talk to them, oh yeah, we want experience with this or that. So those internships are, are super critical. So you need to um, get, your, get your good grades, get your internships. There's someone that um, my husband worked with, his, his kids, they got internships at Amazon. <laughs> That's sweet, right? So, so yeah, the biggest barrier, I guess, would be the, besides that, the, the, the experience. And, and you can do that, get the internships, and. You know, get your grades, get those good grades, get those internships, and then getting that first job. Getting that first job is 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 hard, but not impossible. And right now, right now, the market's pretty hot for software engineers. So yeah, I, I say think things like that. The other barrier would be those interviews. Hey, don't get me started on those interviews. 
<laughs> Maybe actually, it's probably, it's probably a piece of cake for you guys. They're kind of geared toward people who um, who, who do those cutting contests and things like that. They're basically, the big cutting has might, might change by the time you're out there. Anything else? Okay. Um, what do you find is uh, most important when you're collaborating with a team? others because when you're collaborating you need to you need to understand the other person you need to compromise you need to maybe keep in mind the big picture and, and the goals so th 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 things like that probably things that you guys are doing all the time you need to what talk communicate listen try to all together so um yeah and you know, when all else fails, uh, I, I suggest that, uh, going going out for boba or something like that. <laughs> and, and keep, or, in all seriousness, every job I go to, I make my chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Makes people happy. <laughs> Food makes people happy. But no, yeah, basically just good communication and checking the ego at the door. What have you? Oh, I got that. See, so that you worked at some small companies and some like medium-sized yeah. companies. How does like the work experience differ between like companies of different sizes? You know, sometimes it's not just the company. I guess let's see. What can some of the differences be? Okay, a couple different pieces. One thing is that you can, you can work on a small team in a huge company, it can feel like a startup, so there's that. A larger company though is going to have more resources, so that, that could be a factor in um, equipment you get or things like that. A, a larger company might be able to, might have more revenue and might be able to cushion ups and downs better. You might be a, a really small company and do is one company, one customer, and oh my gosh, it's layoff time. Uh, not necessarily. So, so there's there's differences like that, and I guess with a small, sometimes with a really small company, it can there's advantages where one person can wear many hats, and that can be cool if you like that. You might have more uh, more opportunity to to learn different things. Not that you can't do that at a bigger company. So, so that's just something, because what I see is there's just definitely just advantages and disadvantages for every size, not, and it's not like one is good or bad, so but it's really, yeah, really good questions. Yeah. So how do you, like, what do you think the most efficient way is to divide up work among the group of people, get up one task? Um, good question. I guess it... I guess it depends on a lot of things. First, you know, what, what is what is the work to be done because, and then how to, how to break it up because it might be a, a piece of work where this group has got no, no part of it. So it depends how it breaks up. If it breaks up and there's like six parts for one person, then you're gonna have to go, okay, um, you're gonna have to make decisions like, can some of that be deferred? Can someone else jump in and help in? So there's a lot of decisions that go on with with providing up and apportioning work. But but some of the basic things are when you look at the task and look at all the pieces and all are all these pieces critical. If you have if you have some issue like it's too much work to do or you don't have all the right people or someone's going to be overloaded, then you have to make decisions about prioritization, if someone else can can uh, pick up some of the work, so we, there's a lot of decisions to go on with that. It's kind of it's kind of complicated. That's one nice thing when you when you are organized, when you use something like Agile, though, it, it's all it, it, it's all nicely defined. You you literally go uh, on the board and you know, write things down, or you use uh, various various software. 
So yeah, a lot of things can go in that decision. That's a really good question. So maybe two more questions. Yeah. How do you do a document document? Ah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do that document work well? Let's see. Various ways, and it depends on what the work is. First of all, as far as as far as code goes, there's different schools of thought on that. My latest thing is writing more self-documenting code because I like giving meaningful names. The, the, the methods and functions actually say what they do. Validate blah, blah, blah. And variable names are, are good. That way, I don't like counting just kind of every piece of code. The, the anti-negative uh, comments about counting is that they get out of date and they don't get updated. But that said, there's you know some if, you know, some good say, you know, making it uh, valid apple is probably not a bad idea. So, so, so I, I believe you should have documentation. I don't believe you should just write memes and comments in your code. I should be, I feel like it should be more towards being self documenting. Um, but also, but then I believe in other kinds of documentation. I'm a big fan of how, how to ones because. I, I find that I forget things like, okay, here's here's instructions for how to, for example, a, a, a lot of jobs use continuous integration and okay, and I and I might do if I do things like me once a month, I'm not gonna remember next month, so I'll write down exactly what to do. I'll write down for me like a recipe or or ingredients guide. So this is what I do. So so I do I do things like that, and so a lot of companies have have wikis, so they. Um, have documents. I think it, I think it's very good to have things like that. I think it's really good to have documentation to help people on board. I think that's one thing that's a real barrier when a new employee comes on board. Some companies are great and they'll have someone train that person. A lot of companies are like, you're on your own, buddy. So I think it's super helpful to document things like that, kind of basic things like have, a, have an onboarding packet, things like, okay, how do you depending on, on the job, what, what, some, of, some of the processings, uh, maybe you know, using, using good or blah, 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 or just kind of what, what you do, uh, a way, a way, blah, 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 using, using your software, things like that. So I think, so I think having document, documents like that are, are good. Another observation I find though is when, when companies start to say they're really good about mm -hmm. documentation and they have all the stuff on the wiki, I find things get stale pretty quick. Yeah. So I think I think there's an issue with keeping things updated. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's kind of long-winded answer, but there you go. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question. Oh yeah. Do you guys have any sort of convention for um, debugging? Doesn't work. Is it up to the person who built it to debug it, or do you have some sort of like um, other external person who's constantly trying to stress test it, or how does how do you find bugs? Very, very good question. Um, the jobs I've worked at, there there are QA teams who mm -hmm. test things, but there are there are now some companies are moving towards, well, the developer tests his own code. And there's pros and cons to that too. Related to that, my job at the biotech company, we, at least we strove towards what we call test-driven development, in which case the developers were actually supposed to write their test cases beforehand, that before writing code, so I kind of did that. So basically, so it was on the developers to write what we call the unit test cases, and so, and that was cool because then we had this suite of, of test cases so that we could run those and be sure that our, our code works. So there was sort of, sort of that kind of testing going on. Then um, also we did continuous integration so that we can regularly build. And so in, in for, for that process, I think a, a bunch of test cases were run for that too, so you can have kind of this kind of suite of, we call regression test cases. 
So, so there's there's all kinds of things that kind of basically tested if things were functionally working. So, so there's that. So basically, in that case, you have a dedicated QA team that, to actually run a lot of formal tests. But what was nice about that is that the stupid bugs are already cleaned out. Stuff basically worked. And basically, if you, the whole thing built in, basically, the, the integration between the parts is probably pretty good. And that way, the QA could, could work on the next few harder bugs or creative bugs or more running the whole system and stress testing. So, so to answer your question, I think the developer should, should basically test his or her own code now so that it pretty much works. And then I think it's very good to have a suite of tests that you kind of really do run for, for the whole the whole piece of code. And then and so you and then you, you, you're pretty sure that it, it's in pretty good shape. And then if you, you have the luxury of having a dedicated QA team that dedicated QA team can should test the heck out of the code and do more complicated stress thing, stress testing, things like that. So there you go. Let's give a big hand in the Well thanks for letting me. As you can tell I kinda like